science is boring. But I was always in love with science. When I was young, I would read books about dinosaurs, animals, space. I consumed television shows like National Geographic and Cine Escuela. I grew up in an environment where I was encouraged to ask questions and find answers to them. As I grew up, however, I soon realized that science wasn't as attractive to many people as it was for me. I was just very fortunate to have grown up with people who shared my interests. And so I asked myself, why? This has led me on a journey with science. And that journey began one night. I was a dormer in freshman year high school, and my dorm mate asked me a question. Pao, if you had one million pesos to improve science education in the Philippines, how would you use it? I was shocked. I wasn't ready for that Miss Universe question. <laughs> I was expecting something more along the lines of, ready ka na ba para sa test bukas? But that question, while it wasn't the most well thought out one, has sparked a conversation that continues until today. Even if I do not have a million pesos now, the very thought of being able to contribute to science education as a student inspired me to take on this pursuit, a pursuit towards creating a culture of science. So what is a culture of science? A culture of science is a world where Filipinos are aware of the role of science and technology in their daily lives. It's not a world where Filipinos all take science as a profession, but where Filipinos value science. Where our limitations can become exciting opportunities. And today I'm going to share with you three ways we can create a culture of science. Informal learning, chikahan, and science diplomacy. It's not meant to be a comprehensive plan on creating a culture of science. It's just a collection of proposals that I'd like everyone here to think over, talk about, and later on, act upon. So three years after that freshman uh, night at the dorm, I was taking an innovation class in high school, and we'd a, we had a homework on informal learning. We were asked to interview members of our school community on informal learning and get to know what they knew about it. And afterwards, taking the insights from those interviews, design solutions so we could improve informal learning opportunities in our school. That was the first time that I had encountered informal learning. So what is it? Informal learning is spontaneous. It's where the learner takes the shots, calls the shots. It's an opportunity for the learner to change direction when needed. It's an opportunity for them to learn even more. For example, a TED Talk. Listening to a TED Talk is informal learning. You may not have control over what I say, but you are in an environment where you are challenged to question and talk about these talks with your fellow audience members. So how does this help create a culture of science? Whenever we scroll down our newsfeed, look at science articles, Whenever we engage in a conversation about science, we are allowing ourselves to contribute to creating a culture of science. A few weeks ago, my friend and I, we concluded our first science communication class for grade 10 students, where we had them read uh, science journal articles, full-length journal articles, you know, 10, 20 pages. Uh, then afterwards, we would write about it. We would make posters on those articles. Then we, then we would talk about it in class. And I was really impressed by these grade 10 students. They took on the challenge of reading these full-length journal articles and learning more about these concepts that they had never heard of before, and even daring to ask questions about it, daring to challenge what they had read. And in one of the classes, uh, they were presenting their poster uh, to a panel of scientists, and their topic was about uh, greenhouse gases. And one of the marine scientists on the panel was telling them, oh, did you know that 50% of carbon dioxide is absorbed by rainforests and the other 50% is absorbed by uh, plankton in the ocean? 
And then one of the members of the group that had just presented asked the marine scientist, Kuya, ano po yung source niyo? <laughs> Everybody laughed. Uh, but then the marine scientist said, that's exactly the question that I want to hear. Uh, he, he, told, uh, he told the kid, you know, uh, add me on Facebook later and I'll message you the article. Right. So the point isn't that journal articles are the be-all, end-all of knowledge. It's that we must always go beyond the first impression. It's so easy to simply take in everything that we hear or watch as true or false, depending on what we believe in. But reality isn't that simple. It's much more exciting than that. And it all begins with questions. Questioning our preconceived notions, questioning our standards, questioning the status quo. This curiosity will drive us to look for more opportunities to learn. Curiosity drives informal learning. Curiosity is also at the heart of scientific discovery. Science is a way of thinking defined by curiosity. Thanks to the scientists who have dared to ask questions about the things around them, thanks to the scientists who dared to examine the anomalies around them, we have all of these innovations and knowledge. So my personal suggestion is to start asking questions about the things you're passionate about, whether it's about philosophy, politics, augmented intelligence, building desktops, K-pop groups. It doesn't have to be about science. As long as you're asking questions and making discoveries along the way, that's science. Dare to ask. So I, I did my homework on the informal learning the interviews. So I started with my dorm mates, <laughs> the, the obvious choice. And as, we, as I was interviewing them, that interview turned into a heated conversation about science education because it was fueled by our senior writers, our research project, and our, the K-12 bill. And so that conversation drove us, it inspired us to pool all of our passion for science education into creating an organization that would be able to implement the ideas that we had. Ideas to create a, a YouTube channel on Filipino science to create science camps for high school students across the country, to design a new brand of science magazines. So we took all of these ideas and founded Integrating Science in the Philippines, or ESIP. ESIP has led me on a lot of informal learning opportunities. And it all started with Chikahan. So what is Chikahan? Chikahan is the time that we spend conversing with other people outside of planned schedule. It usually happens after a meeting or after an event. And the time after the event or the meeting, and the time before we leave the room. Just like in formal learning, it's spontaneous. But sometimes, Chikahan is associated with gossip and a waste of time. But I believe that Chikahan is an opportunity for us to create a culture of science. How does it help create a culture of science? Chikahan builds ideas. The story of how ESIP came about is a perfect example of this. Chikahan builds relationships. Uh, in, in my experience managing communities like ESIP, I realized that the time that we spend outside of meetings and outside of work, just talking about random things, getting to know each other, is just as important as the time we spend working. Chikahan connects people and ideas. We invited scientists over for our science camp to panel, and they came quite early. They were also from different fields. We had an astrophysicist, uh, we had geologists over. And so I introduced them to each other. And they began talking. They began sharing their backgrounds, their work, their passion. And that Chikahan moment was an opportunity for them to connect and build their network. So where do we begin? Chikahan is all about time. So making time is important. But of course, this won't all happen in an instant. We have to reach a critical point. So the question is, how much time are you willing to spend? Chikahan is also about people. We intentionally invite scientists over to our science camp so they can converse with the students, so that there will be an exchange of experience, insights, questions. In the same way, we should also seek out people from whom we can learn, who can add value to our pursuits people we would make time for. So try asking out an expert in your field 
or an expert in a completely unfamiliar field. Ask them out for coffee or for beer. Who knows, they might be your future collaborator or mentor. Last December, I was uh, connected by my friend to the University of Pennsylvania Science Diplomacy Group. Science Diplomacy? What's that? That was the first time I had ever heard of Science Diplomacy. But they were very interested in ESIP. They wanted to know uh, what we were doing, uh, who we were, and they also wanted to know about science education in the Philippines. So I seized the opportunity to meet them since I was going to the States to visit my dad anyway for the holidays. So what is Science Diplomacy? Science diplomacy is the use of science to advance collaboration among communities, institutions, and more importantly, nations. Through science diplomacy, scientists are able to immerse themselves in communities outside of their own. They're able to engage. So how does this help create a culture of science? Science diplomacy brings the government closer to science. Last March 21, Pinoy scientists a group led by astrophysicist and data scientist Dr. Rainer Reyes and journalist Shai Panella coordinated with the Senate Committee on Science, Technology, and Engineering to organize the very first roundtable discussion among scientists, stakeholders, and the government. ESIP was invited, and it was a very great learning opportunity for us. We learned about the Magna Carta for Scientists, the Balik Scientist Program, the different ideas these scientists had to include science and data experts in different government agencies, the National Space Development Program, and science education. Science diplomacy brings industry closer to science. In my experience uh, as a student, being active in organizing startup events and attending hackathons, I've witnessed how scientists and engineers can drive innovation through startups by bringing together their expertise and a passion for entrepreneurship. Science diplomacy brings the public closer to science. The recent marches of science held in Washington, D.C. and in Quezon City showed us that people need to know more about what is happening in the scientific community, especially now in a rapidly changing environment. So as you can see, science diplomacy is about bringing people together. And this is where informal learning and chikahan culminate on a global level. So where do we begin? The University of Pennsylvania Science Diplomacy Group started out with meetups and talks like the one I attended, just sharing pizza and coke. And that provided them an opportunity to listen to different perspectives, to listen to different views. And in the same way, we must also seek out opportunities where we can hear or watch different perspectives, where we can listen to views that we don't necessarily agree with. It's my dream that Philippine universities will have their own science diplomacy groups so that science advocates can let their voice be heard and students will become more informed because when we're more informed, we can take a stand. Science is boring because we don't cultivate the culture for it to grow. Informal learning taught me that science is a way of thinking. Chikahan taught me that science is a way of communicating. Science diplomacy taught me that science is a way of bringing people together. These are the tools that we can use to create a culture of science. And in order to do that, we need scientists. Scientists, not as a profession, but as a way of life. It's not that hard. We all have a scientist in us. We can start in our comfort zones, on the screens of our phones. The question that I was asked in freshman year no longer haunts me. What haunts me now are the questions, how many more Filipinos out there are taking on the challenge of thinking along the same lines? Will all our efforts be enough? And as I continue my work in ESIP, I meet more and more people who are answering similar questions. Today is no different. Today, I pass on the question that began my journey with science. Today, I ask you, 
If you were given a million pesos to improve science education in the Philippines, how would you use it? <laughs> 